Hi, I'm Brett, and this is my channel, Brett Blumenthal Studio, where I discuss everything watercolors. If you'd like to learn about watercolors, please subscribe. In today's video, I'm sharing a very special custom commission I did a couple of years ago. A couple reached out to me, and when I saw this custom commission, it was such a touching and special project. There was no way I was going to say no. The couple had hired a surrogate to carry their baby. I don't have a huge amount of information about the relationship between them or whether or not they knew each other prior, but the couple clearly felt a very strong connection to the surrogate because they felt this desire to gift her with something very unique and special. The couple's last name was Crow and the surrogate mother's last name was Wolf. And they wanted a piece of art that spoke to this relationship between them. So they wanted a painting of a wolf and a baby crow. I get teary just thinking about this story and my heart gets all warm and fuzzy inside. So as you might imagine, it was really important for me to capture this relationship in a very delicate and beautiful way. Wolves are complex, highly intelligent animals who are caring, playful, and above all, devoted to family. They are fiercely loyal and mate for life. I also love that the surrogate was the wolf and the baby was the crow. When I sketched this out, I had a few different options in mind, but in all of them, I really wanted it to be apparent that the wolf was caring of that crow, that the wolf wanted to be sure that the crow was protected. The customer chose a layout that had the crow and the wolf nose to nose, and I had to smile about this because in other species, if you observe them, this is often how they greet one another. It felt really authentic. For instance, my cat Da Vinci and my dog Dakota always come nose to nose when they come together after some time apart. It's so, so sweet. And it's as if they are saying, hi, I missed you. Where were you? So with that, let's head over to watch the painting process. One of the things that the couple really wanted to have in their artwork was the idea of springtime because this was going to be a baby that was born in the end, at the end of April. And so we started with the idea that the wolf and the crow were actually part of the birth of spring. And so I kept it pretty simple by using this lighter green base with a wet on wet application and had just a few flowers in the foreground to sort of frame the wolf and the baby crow. I used sap green, medium yellow, and I created a purple from ultramarine and magenta. I kept these flowers really delicate because really they were not the most important aspect of the artwork. It was really going to be the wolf and the crow that was really important. So there was detail, but it was really not meant to overshadow the wolf and the baby crow. I always find that sometimes I don't always start with the animals in pieces. Sometimes I start with the backgrounds. It really depends on how you are framing your subject. In this case, because the wolf and the crow were sort of behind the flowers, I did them after the flowers. Once the flowers were done, I laid a wet on wet base color for both the wolf and the crow. Once that was laid in, I started to texturize the fur of the wolf. And the colors are really a neutral color palette because when we think about nature, the color palette is a very neutral color palette. Wolves are brown, gray, and white. And so I used a very light, light consistency of sepia and Payne's gray to color in the wolf's fur. I used my liners to get that finer detail of fur, but on the base color, I use a larger round. And then I layer in the fur, depending on how big those fur clumps are. I always go from biggest to small. So larger strokes first, and then I get into more detail with my smaller brushes. I tried to get the variety of color in the wolf's fur 
by alternating between that light sepia and Payne's Gray. Because when you look at an animal's fur, rarely is fur one color. Like for instance, my cat's fur can have brown, black, gray, and white all in one strand of fur. It's really amazing. So when you're painting animal fur, you have to think about the full range of color that their fur has. For instance, if you're painting a black dog, rarely is it just black. There may be undertones of blue or red. And so trying to capture that through your different underpaintings, as well as your specific strands of fur, can be really helpful in making your watercolors come to life and look realistic. Here I'm getting into the eye and there, the fur around an animal's eye is really, really short. They have very dense fur around their eye, but the strands are really short. So making sure you get that texture is really important. I intentionally made it seem like the wolf was sort of smiling. And actually, when you look at dogs, a lot of times they do look like they're smiling, especially when they're happy. I do believe that maybe they're smiling. And so, you know, the wolf is, is probably happy. He's overlooking this baby crow, nose to nose, and it's a touching moment. So having a slight turn upwards on his smile was something I wanted to include. Again, these fur strands around noses and eyes are so short. So I'm using my liner here. I'm doing the eye and I'm trying to be very careful to preserve whites because the white is really important in an animal's eye. You want to get the reflection of light in their eyes so that it looks more natural and real. So I keep going over the eye and I keep dabbing with my paper towel so that I don't get it too dark. I wanted to keep that lightness in his eye. And I don't know why I keep saying him. It's a her, obviously, but her eye is, is supposed to be light so that you can really see how the light's reflecting on it, but also how you can see her gaze at the baby crow. All these little strands of fur are being painted with my liner. When you are painting in a realistic fashion, it's really important to layer a lot. So a lot of glazing goes into my artwork. This is how you capture that realistic look. If you just do one coat of paint, it becomes very flat. And so you want to make sure that you're having multiple layers. Now on the crow, you'll notice I used a blue because with crows and even ravens or magpies in general, if you look at their feathers, there's a real interesting bluish tone, almost purplish tone to a lot of their feathers. And so I wanted to make sure that the underpainting had that bluish tint to show what a magpie would really look like. Again, I'm layering in the feathers. I went from the largest to the smallest. So the details come at the very end. Always work from the largest part of your paintings or the biggest part of your paintings to the smallest part of your paintings or smaller details in that order. And the more you do your layers, the more realistic you'll get of an outcome. So here I really have the noses sort of touching, but I want to get a little bit more dimension so you can really see the outline of the crow's nose. So that's why I kept going in there with some shadows. The frame was a little loose at the bottom, so I went back in and I started painting some more grasses.
and it's pretty close to complete. I hope you enjoyed watching the process of Wolf and Baby Crow unfold. As always, if you like this video, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel. And be sure to check out my free downloads at the end of this video or in the below description to help you begin your watercolor journey. Until next time, keep calm and watercolor on.